let's continue about the aspect of change and how do we reduce resistance to change? Communication, communication, communication. It should be the highest priority and the first strategy that should be in your notes. Create a sense of urgency for the change. That'll help reduce the uncertainty. We have to go here. It's a must. The competitors are going there. We have to do it. If we don't do it, we'll have all kinds of problems. Make certain you take time out and start resolving some of the problems. Get input as to how to solve them, as to how to make it happen. Teach people about the aspect of change. What needs to be done? Bring in consultants if you have to. Some of the problems, it's time consuming and, and, and really consumes people's time because they need to take work away from what they're doing presently to learn about the need for change, but you have to do the change. It goes on and on. Employee involvement. The more you listen to employees, we have to do this. And then if you stop and listen to the employees and get their feedback on the same thing, well, we can do it this way, this way. If you get them to have input into the change you're about to do, you're going to reduce the resistance and then they may not only accept it, they may be champions of the change because they had input into it. Then they're motivated to do it and they're happier about doing it because they own it. That is the ultimate. Um, stress management, less wasted energy. It's time consuming, costly. It doesn't help everybody. Yes, but you don't want to have people, if you can, you want them to be unstressed if that's all, all possible. Negotiation, it could be necessary for those who clearly lose. Sometimes somebody's going to lose. I, I've always been in charge of that. You'll be in charge of this over here. Okay, but I'm worried about keeping my job. They may not say that outwardly, but they may be saying that inwardly. So be careful uh, negotiating. If it's obvious somebody's going to lose something, prepare a message beforehand so you don't damage them. Or maybe you want to damage them. But keep in mind, if you do, you'll have an unhappy person that'll be an anti-missionary to your change. Coercion, you know what? We're doing it. We're doing it now. Your deadline to have this turned into me is next week, Wednesday. If not, you and I will talk. Let's get this done. Sometimes you have to fire them, okay? But if you use coercion, anytime you use coercion, just so you know, here's the rule on the five bases of power. If you use coercion, it's the one base of power. When you use it, the fear of it diminishes. The other ones, it's not a problem. But the whole thing of fear, I'll fire you. I'll fire you. As soon as you use that tool and fire somebody, people realize that person didn't die and that they might have got a better position from your company. So be careful about using the whole thing of termination. That's a last resort. But when you start using it, people stop trusting you. The, to refreeze changes, alter the reward system, change career pathways, revise the information systems, whatever, you want to refreeze the changes to help keep people in line so the new condition holds true. Communication and more strategy is, is the best is, is the best strategy as you consult, consult, talk, talk, talk. Use a consultant so you have a good scapegoat after you announce changes. You bring in a consultant. This is not so much in your textbook. You bring in a consultant. Let the consultant recommend the change and say, we're implementing the change a consultant recommended. I don't like that consultant either. He'll never work here again or she'll never work here again. But that said, let's follow these directions. You're supposed to be the experiences, those consultants. You know how they are. The consultant doesn't care. They get paid. So that said, you throw them out the door, blame them nonstop, and that way they're a scapegoat and you can escape the heat. That's what people do all the time. Communication, learning, employee involvement, stress, negotiation, coercion. Those are overall your best strategy when it comes down to change. Use those tools. By the way, this is a note, certainly is not in the textbook. If you're going to use the employees to create the change, backfill their positions, and that way they don't get buried behind in the work. Build, backfill them. That way they don't have to worry about the routine stuff, and they get to implement the change and thereby own it a little bit more. So reduce the resistance change. If you use these strategies, it'll be much more accepting. Take care.